You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the new Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Seven decades after the world witnessed the devastating atomic bomb blasts over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 122 countries have signed a new treaty to ban nuclear weapons. But absent from the signing ceremony were the nine states known to have nuclear weapons, and many others who would prefer to strengthen the existing non-proliferation agreement. A doomed start for the new treaty? Stay with us. In July 2017, amid rising tensions over North Korea's nuclear and missile tests, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned the world that the threat of a nuclear attack was at its highest level since the end of the Cold War. The truth is that there are still an estimated 15,000 of them in the world today, and many on high alert status. But how do we reach this situation? A world free of nuclear weapons is a long-standing objective of the UN and the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons has guided non-proliferation and disarmament efforts since the 1970s. It grants the five nuclear weapon states, China, France, Russia, the UK and the US, exclusive rights to possess nuclear arsenals but also encourages them to move towards nuclear disarmament. One problem is that there are four other countries with nuclear weapons outside that treaty – India, Pakistan, Israel and North Korea. Moreover, the non-nuclear states and civil society representatives are not happy with the pace of disarmament and therefore called for a legally binding instrument to increase the pressure to disarm. Advocates of the total elimination of nuclear arms such as the Humanitarian Initiative and the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize winner the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons believe the only way to spare the world from the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of another atomic blast is to rid the world of nuclear weapons. But opponents of such a ban argue that nuclear weapons are an essential element of deterrence which helps prevent conflict and war. So it was amidst heated debate that in July 2017, the new treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons was adopted at UN headquarters in New York with 122 votes in favour, one against, which was the Netherlands, and one abstention, which was Singapore. The nine nuclear-armed states and most NATO countries didn't even attend the conference and only five EU member states, Austria, Cyprus, Ireland, Malta and Sweden, voted in favour of the adoption of the ban treaty. The lack of an EU position on the ban reflects a long-standing division in the EU on nuclear disarmament. Two EU member states possess nuclear weapons and four host tactical nuclear weapons on their territory, while others, such as Austria, strongly support the ban treaty. But let's take a look at the provisions of the new treaty. Well, under the new treaty, signatory states must agree not to develop, test, produce, acquire, possess, stockpile, use or threaten to use nuclear weapons. And it will also prohibit signatories from allowing any nuclear arms to be stationed on their territory. But the adoption of the pact has raised praise and criticism in equal measure. Indeed, it's been hailed by supporters as a historic move to rid the world of the most destructive weapon ever produced by mankind. But opponents argue that the conditions for disarmament do not currently exist and fear it will undermine the existing non-proliferation treaty recognised as the cornerstone of global disarmament efforts. The US, Britain and France said the prohibition simply wouldn't work and would end up disarming their nations while emboldening bad actors, in the words of US Ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley. Also, the French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian described the treaty as wishful thinking that is close to irresponsible. Instead, the nuclear powers have suggested strengthening the current non-proliferation treaty, which they believe has led to significant reduction in nuclear arsenals worldwide. In October 2016, the European Parliament welcomed the convening of a UN conference to negotiate a legally binding instrument to ban nuclear stocks, but it has not yet taken a position on the new treaty since it was adopted in July 2017. Sign of a doomed start? It's hard to be optimistic. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Mm -hmm.